Rem Kuhlhaus is one of the world's most intelligent architects. He founded his Office for Metropolitan Architecture in London in the 1970s, and today they have offices around the world, staffed with an extraordinary range of friends and collaborators of all cultures and all ages. And now the Barbican Arts Centre has put on an exhibition called Progress, looking at 35 years of the work of Rem Kuhlhaus and OMA. The intriguing thing, it's not been curated by the architects themselves, which you'd expect architects to do. They've given the project out to a firm of young Belgian curators called Rotor. They created a kind of Aladdin's cave of architectural projects, and the result is an absolute delight. One great capacity you have uh, in the office at OMA and personally is this ability of self-criticism, of self-doubt. How do you keep that sense of criticism? I'm a criticism machine myself and, and it's largely addressed at the office and, and, and at myself. And so I, 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 I cannot even imagine what it would be like to, to kind of surrender it. And, as, and but of course we also found uh, a kind of partnership of, of people that uh, kind of support it and sustain it and can stand it you know because it's not 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 always easy and, and not always nice uh, but but uh, I think it's a very uh, important to maintain it the office seems to be like a, a continual work in progress um, a novelist told me not so long ago that um, every book ever written is a a work in progress yeah, yeah. because you know every author wants to rewrite the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it probably the same for arch yeah, no, architecture? Yeah, isn't I, it? I, I'm very happy you asked that question because for me, work in progress is a very beautiful terminology, and and the office as a work in progress is really, really what I've dedicated the last four years uh, on, and that's why we, we also have these kind of current concerns. Tell us about that the think tank in the office, so I think people would be interested and in care about it. It says OMA is the Office of Metropolitan Architecture. Yes, OMA does buildings uh, and AMO does everything which is not building. And, uh, you know, a while ago I, I became kind of totally frustrated that an architect is somebody uh, with uh, abilities and with ideas, but he has to kind of wait until people come to you and ask, I want you to do this. And so. Um, but we felt a, a kind of urgency to really find a way that, uh, as an architect, you could uh, develop your own agenda and kind of pursue your own ideas. And so with AMO, we can kind of launch uh, a new model of education, which takes one year, uh, and which we're launching in uh, Moscow, for instance, in uh, Strelka. Or we can do a kind of research on the state of agriculture and the state of the countryside. Nobody is asking us, but we are simply doing it. Uh, and uh, so basically what we are trying to do that we whatever happens to us and whatever we will be asked uh, we have the kind of knowledge to kind of uh, apply it and to address it. Over the last 35 years OMA's approach to architecture has been kaleidoscopic and all but indefinable. The curators have been charged with making fresh sense of a mesmerizing wealth of OMA material. What have you had? You've had Masses of drawings, what films, drawings, books. When it's in the archive, there are a few, maybe 10 or 20,000 items in, in, in the archive. That's, that's already a lot, but those have a catalogue, so that's the easy thing. But if you want to dig in her near's head, uh, that's, that's something completely different because you, you, you tell him we want to present this project like that, and he said, Oh, but one day I got a letter from this guy, and you should find this because he said that, and so on. And, uh, that's, that's, I think, where it, where it got complicated. Because OMA keeps changing, doesn't it? It's not one of those architectural practices that you can say was fixed. One of the funny things is we showed the, the paper waste of OMA and we were showing how much confidential stuff was in there. So two weeks later, all the paper waste baskets had a lock. And it's like, uh, you don't know how it happens, but, but you say something and then ten days later you see that everything has changed and that there is a new... They're very, very flexible in, in, in adapting to, to a situation that's quite, quite amazing for such a large organisation. The Barbican Show is not a regular architecture exhibition. It's about ideas as well as the sheer tactile quality of OMA's radical buildings. Rem Koolhaas's practice, famous for the China Central Television headquarters in Beijing, has built around the world, and yet he has just realised his first buildings in Britain. It's interesting that this year you've got two buildings opening in Britain with OMA. You've got Maggie Centre just opened in Glasgow, and 
is a bank for and then Rothschild in the City of London opening perhaps later on this year or early next. The first two buildings are almost at a polar difference. One's for a very high finance City of London operation, one is a cancer well, care. I, uh, it's very rare that the architects in our situation are asked to do good things. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and the Megacenter Centre is undeniably a good thing. Um, good morally, you mean? Uh -huh. in, good in a good moral morally, sense. Good morally, yeah, in a moral sense. Um, but it, it coincided with a kind of moment that we also uh, in the office were uh, becoming very um, skeptical of, of the extravagance uh, of certain architecture. And so uh, with the Rothschild building we also really uh, did a building which is subtle and, and which is kind of highly contextual and which looks at the city of London kind of through a magnifying glass and which doesn't make a kind of blatant or, uh, or immediate uh, gesture. So in that sense the two are connected and I think are to some extent a new phase of the office. Rem, there's more and more and more building in the world. Um, buildings grow now like wild plants yeah. across the planet and about 90% of them are just rubbish. Yeah. Or junk. You're, you're totally right and uh, you would have to be a missionary to, uh, to kind of even attempt to deal with it uh, and to some extent um, I think I, I am a missionary uh, but I think you cannot kind of really uh, deal with that kind of condition uh, up front. You know, you know I, I wrote junk space you know, so I, uh, you know, in, in words I dealt with it but I simply don't have the appetite and maybe also not the temperament and maybe also not the position because I think um, it's politicians that ought to deal with that uh, and, and not uh, kind of people like us. But there have been many times that I actually thought I should move to the other side and actually become a politician. Yeah. Particularly 10 years ago, I was very interested in doing it, but then that has receded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ram, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.